those bacteria which live in extreme environmental conditions or adverse conditions are called as archaebacteria example nostoc they have specialized cells which are called as heterocyst and it is this heterocyst that help in fixing atmospheric nitrogen and therefore they are very very useful for plants why they have been placed separately because bacteria do have a cell wall where it is made up of polysaccharides and amino acids but these mycoplasma completely don't have a cell wall hello everyone a warm welcome to this session on first pc biology i'm dr divya biology faculty vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysore so in this session let us deal with a small topic under chapter 2 biological classification so the topic that we are going to study is kingdom monera we shall learn about this and also look into some of the mcqs that can be framed for this particular topic so kingdom monera under this the bacteria which are unicellular they are unicellular so we have already seen in the previous session wherein i had talked about the different kingdoms in general and we came to know that they have cellular level of organization wherein they are unicellular in nature so all bacteria has come under kingdom monera and talking about where they live so they can live in soil in extreme conditions such as hot springs in deserts that is arid conditions in snow freezing temperatures and in deep oceans where the light doesn't penetrate and talking about their structure it is very simple because they are unicellular they have one single cell but their behavior is very very complex when it comes to their mode of infection their mode of nutrition their mode of reproduction all that is very complex talking about their metabolic diversity or their mode of nutrition so they can be autotrophic wherein they can synthesize their own food in autotrophic they can be photosynthetic autotrophs example cyanobacteria so cyanobacteria is also called as blue green algae the cyanobacteria has chlorophyll a pigments in them that is why they are also called as blue green algae because they show some of the characteristics that is similar to algae but because they are unicellular and majority of the times they have characteristics like that of a bacteria they have been put under the kingdom monera because and they are named as cyanobacteria they are photosynthetic because they are capable of synthesizing their own food as they have chlorophyll pigment in them and they can be chemosynthetic autotrophs kingdom monera can be chemosynthetic autotrophs wherein they can synthesize foods by making use of some of the chemicals like nitrogen nitrates nitrites and ammonia so that is why and they can be heterotrophic wherein they can depend on other organisms for their food and if they are heterotrophic they can be pathogenic wherein they can cause diseases in human beings in animals that is farm animals pet animals and they can also cause diseases to crop plants like we have um, cholera bacteria that cause cholera typhoid tetanus all that and uh, also they can cause diseases uh, in plants crop plants for example citrus canker it is a disease that is caused in the citrus fruit plants so all these so therefore they can be pathogenic or parasitic as well so this is about the general characteristics of kingdom monera in kingdom monera the kingdom monera is again divided into two classes that is archaebacteria and eubacteria so we'll study about these two separately archaebacteria so archaebacteria those bacteria which live in extreme environmental conditions or adverse conditions are called as archaebacteria for example they can live in extreme salt conditions where no other organisms can survive so those bacteria that live in extreme or high salt conditions they are called as halophiles and they can live in hot springs wherein the temperature is very very high and such bacteria that live in hot springs are called as thermoacidophiles 
and they can also live in marshy areas that is swampy or damp areas and such bacteria are called as methanogens. And also these methanogens are present in the gut of some ruminant animals. So ruminant animals are the ones which eat grass and their excreta is nothing but a dung. So for example cows, buffaloes all these are ruminant animals. So these methanogens bacteria they stay in the gut or the intestine of these ruminant animals and they convert and whenever this uh, animals they uh, put dung or they excrete dung they convert the methane or they produce methane in that particular dung and therefore that is why they are called as methanogens. So methanogens are the organisms that produce methane from the excreta of the animal and talking about the cell wall these bacteria, do they have a cell wall? Yes, they have a cell wall, but is it made up of cellulose? No. So what is it made up of? It is made up of polysaccharides and amino acids. And it is this cell wall that helps the bacteria to survive in this extreme condition. The cell wall is so tough and rigid that any adverse conditions, these bacteria can survive. That is archaebacteria. Next, talking about the next class under Kingdom Monera, it is eubacteria. Eubacteria are the true bacteria and they are found abundant in nature. In air, water, soil, everywhere you can find these bacteria on humans, on plants, on animals, everywhere you can find them. So they also have a very tough or rigid cell wall. So therefore, they have a cell wall and if these bacteria are motile, meaning they are capable of moving from one place to another, it is because they have a flagellum. So therefore, those bacteria which are capable of moving from one place to another or which are capable or which are motile, they have a structure that helps them to move. It is called as flagellum. So flagellum is nothing but a whip-like structure. Whip-like structure. So if you see a bacterial cell, you can see flagella. It is a whip-like stru structure which is very thin and slender. Like how we have legs to move, these bacteria have flagella which helps them to move from one place to another. Next talking about the mode of nutrition that is metabolic diversity. So they uh, can be autotrophic or they can be heterotrophic. So if they are autotrophic, they are photosynthetic autotrophs. For example, we have cyanobacteria which is also called as blue-green algae. They are photosynthetic autotrophs because they have chlorophyll A pigment in them. They can be chemosynthetic autotrophs which depend on nitrites, nitrates and ammonia for their food or which synthesize their own food using nitrates, nitrites and ammonia. Then heterotrophs wherein they depend on other organisms for their food like they can be pathogenic or parasitic wherein they depend on other living host for their food meaning they can reside in human beings, make use of the human's nutrition and cause diseases in humans, reside in animals and plants and cause diseases in plants and animals. So they are heterotrophs. Next, we'll study about each of these one by one that is photosynthetic autotrophs or photosynthetic eubacteria. So, photosynthetic eubacteria, best example is cyanobacteria which is also called as blue-green algae. So, what do they have? They have chlorophyll that is especially chlorophyll A pigment in them and they are made up of a single cell because all bacteria are unicellular in nature. They can occur in colonies that is they can form one one colony like this. This is one cell. This is also one cell. This is also one cell. Meaning it is not multicellular. Each are individual. This is one bacteria. So this is also one more bacteria. Likewise, you have many bacteria. They form groups. Or they form colonies and this colony gets surrounded by a gelatinous sheath or a mucilaginous sheath. Gelatinous sheath. Gelatinous sheath. They cover, get covered by a mucilaginous or a gelatinous sheath. That is why though they are unicellular and they are individuals, they tend to 
look like as if they occur in groups sometimes and they can be filamentous best example here i have given nostoc this is nostoc so nostoc is a cyanobacteria it is a example for a cyanobacteria nostoc and anabena here i have taken nostoc so this is a filamentous can you see the cells are arranged in a filament like form so therefore it is a filamentous bacteria Next, the call, I, as I told you, the colonies are surrounded by a gelatinous or a mucilaginous sheath, meaning they have a slimy sheath surrounding them. And they, these together in groups, they can cause algal blooms. Like you might have seen on ponds and all that, you can, you can see a thin, slimy green color that is entirely covering the pond or the lake. They are nothing but because of this cyanobacteria, overgrowth of the cyanobacteria or the blue-green algae. And that overgrowth is called as algal blooms. Algal blooms because, it is called algal blooms because cyanobacteria are also called as blue-green algae. But again remember, they are not algae or algae. They are bacteria only. But they are named blue-green algae because they show some resemblance to algae having a pigment chlorophyll in them. Next, they help in fixing atmospheric nitrogen in specialized cells called heterocyst. Example, nostoc, they have specialized cells which are called as heterocyst and it is this heterocyst that help in fixing atmospheric nitrogen and therefore they are very very useful for plants in, because they help in fixing atmospheric nitrogen or they help the plants to make use of the nitrogen that is present in the atmosphere and in turn they also increase the fertility of the soil therefore helping the plants to grow properly. So one of the best example for photosynthetic autotrophic U bacteria is nostoc and anabena which are both are nothing but cyanobacteria itself. Next is chemosynthetic autotrophs. So these chemosynthetic autotrophs, they tend to oxidize inorganic substances such as nitrates, nitrites and ammonia. And what they do is they make uh, whatever energy is released during the oxidation of uh, nitrates, nitrites and ammonia that they use it for ATP production. That is ATP is nothing but adenosine triphosphate and we all know that ATPs are very very important for all the biochemical pathways to take place in our body properly because for example we are breathing, respiration process, the digestion process, any metabolic or biochemical pathway occurring in our body requires some energy. From where do we get energy? It is from ATP and if ATP has to be produced then these chemosynthetic bacteria are very, very important because they oxidize uh, substances such as nitrates, nitrites and ammonia and use the released energy for producing the ATPs in these bacteria itself. And also chemosynthetic autotrophic bacteria, they play a very, very important role in recycling nutrients, meaning they make use of the nitrogen or they help the plant to absorb lots of a new nitrogen, phosphorus, iron and sulfur and when the plants die again they add back the nutrients to the soil so therefore recycling will take place so they play a great role in recycling in a nutrient cycle. So next talking about heterotrophic bacteria so heterotrophic bacteria they are the bacteria which depend on other organisms for their food so they are important decomposers meaning they are saprophytes they grow on dead and decaying matter, decomposing those organic matter into simpler forms which the plants can easily absorb. So they are important decomposers and these heterotrophic U bacteria are very very important or useful to mankind because they help in curdling of milk that is they help in converting milk to curds and they are also used in the production of antibiotics. They are very, very important for antibiotics production. They are used like we have uh, tetracycline, streptomycin, antibiotics. All these are got from bacteria itself. And they help in fixing nitrogen in leguminous roots. So what are legume roots? So leguminous plants like beans, then um, cowpea, and we have uh, chickpea, then we have... Uh, so what are leguminous plants like we have beans, peas and dolichos, all those are leguminous plants. So in those leguminous plants, if you just 
full uh, bean plant, you can see nodules, not like structures in the roots. So in these not like structures or nodules, these rhizobium bacteria will be present and they in turn help in fixing whatever atmospheric nitrogen is there. They help the plants to make use of this atmospheric nitrogen so that the plants can properly grow because the plants by themselves, they cannot make use of atmospheric nitrogen. That is the time when these bacteria come to help and they help the leguminous plants to fix the atmospheric nitrogen. And apart from that, they are also harmful to humans because some of them can be pathogenic, wherein they cause a lot of diseases in human beings, in crops, farm animals and pets. Like we have a cholera, typhoid and tetanus. These are the diseases of humans and citrus canker, disease of plant. So that is how they cause, they can be decomposers, that is saprophytic or they can be parasitic or pathogen in nature. Next talking about the mode of reproduction. So reproduction is either asexual that is by fission wherein one cell splits into two and multiplies it is fission and under unfavorable conditions they produce spores. So these spores whenever favorable condition comes they germinate and they produce a new organism. Next they also reproduce by sexual reproduction method. So these two this is asexual method fission. Sexual. So, sexual reproduction method wherein they transfer their DNA which is the genetic material. So, if you can see here this is the DNA. It is the DNA that is the genetic material. They transfer the genetic material to the next organism from one bacterium to the other therefore multiplying in numbers. So, this way also reproduction occurs. Next we will talk about one group of bacteria which is placed separately. It is mycoplasma. So mycoplasmas are the smallest known living cells. So which are the smallest living cells in this planet? It is mycoplasma. And why they have been placed separately? Because bacteria do have a cell wall where it is made up of polysaccharides and amino acids. But these mycoplasma completely don't have a cell wall. That is why they have been placed separately as mycoplasma separate. And they are anaerobic that is they can survive without oxygen and they are pathogenic to or disease causing they can cause diseases in plants and animals. So this is mycoplasma which is also a bacteria but it has been placed separately and it is called as mycoplasma. So this was about the topic so now we will study about some of the multiple choice questions that can be framed under this topic. So dash are the members of kingdom Monera. Is it fungi? No, fungi belongs to kingdom fungi. Bacteria belongs to kingdom Monera. So bacteria is the answer. Lichens, they are separate animals. They belong to kingdom Animalia. So here the correct answer is bacteria. Round shaped bacteria are called. Okay, bacteria, they are of different shapes. That is, they can be round or spherical shape. That is, cocker shaped or they can be vibrio or comma shaped, they can be spiral shaped or they can be rod shaped that is bacillus shaped. So here round shaped bacteria are called coccus. Bacillus means it is rod, rod shape. Bacillus is rod shape. Vibrio is comma shape and spiralum is spiral or ribbon like shape. So therefore coccus is round. So it is coccus. Next rod shaped bacteria are called, it is not coccus because it is round, vibrium is comma, spiralum is spiral, bacillus, bacillus is the right answer because it is bacillus are the bacteria that are rod shaped. Vibrio bacteria are, the right answer is comma shaped because I have already told you in the first question itself, vibrio is for comma, bacillus is for rod, coccus is for round and spiral, spiralum is for spiral. Therefore, here comma shaped, vibrobacteria comma shaped. The bacteria that live in harsh environments are placed under. Are they placed under eubacteria, chrysophytes, archaebacteria or ascomycetes? It is not eubacteria because eubacteria are the true bacteria. They are different. Only those bacteria, chrysophytes, no, they come under protistas. So, it is not chrysophytes. 
Ascomycetes, they are the fungi, they come under kingdom fungi, so it is not that. The right answer is Archaebacteria. Archaebacteria are the ones which live in extreme environmental conditions, so harsh environmental conditions. Next question, dash live in extreme salty areas. Is it thermophiles? No. Thermophiles live in high temperature areas. Halophiles live in high salt areas. Hydrophiles in, so it's there's no term like that. Hydrophiles, okay, in water. Then methanogens, they live in gut of ruminant animals or in swamps. So therefore, the right answer is halophiles. Halophiles live in high salty areas. Next, bacteria that live in hot springs are called, is it halophiles? No. Halophiles means salty areas. Is it methanogens? No. In swamp areas and the gut of ruminant animals. So therefore, the answer here is thermoacidophiles is the right answer. So next, dash are the bacteria that live in marshy areas. Is it thermophiles? No, thermophiles are the ones that live in high temperature, hot spring areas. Not hydrophiles, nor um, halophiles. Halophiles live in marshy areas. So the right answer is methanogens are the ones that live in marshy areas. Halophiles live in salty areas. Okay. Dash are present in the gut of ruminant animals, that is cows and buffaloes. It is methano. Gens is the right answer here. Next, nostoc is an example for is it a heterotrophic bacteria? What are heterotrophs? The ones which depend on other organisms. So, nostoc is a cyanobacteria, it is a blue green algae, it has chlorophyll A pigment in it. So, can it be heterotrophic? No, because it has chlorophyll A pigment in it, it can synthesize its own food. Therefore, the correct answer here is autotrophic wherein they are photosynthetic so here photosynthetic option is not there so that is why you can you have to choose autotrophic because autotrophic can be of two forms either photosynthetic or chemosynthetic so therefore autotrophic is the right answer both a and b no because they are not heterotrophic none of the above no because this is the wrong answer b is the right answer none of the above because autotrophic is the right answer so you can't write none of the above here so this was about the session. So in the session, we learned about Kingdom Monera, its characteristics and uh, also we studied about some of the MCQs that can be framed under this particular topic under bio chapter Biological Classification, the topic Kingdom Monera, which includes all the bacteria in it. So I hope you understood this session. So we shall meet again with a new session wherein we'll discuss about with a new topic under this particular chapter, Biological Classification. So, see you in the next session. Thank you.